Okay, let's take a look at our bandsaw and some safety considerations um, that you need to be aware of every single time you use this machine or even if you just come to watch someone else use it. So the first thing that we need to make sure we're doing is cleaning the machine correctly. And that is not only cleaning above, but also cleaning below the table. So I'm gonna grab my air hose here and I'm gonna use it to blow off under the table and to clean under the table, the lower guard must be in the down position. So if it's up like this, I've gotta lower this down before I can clean. Then I can clean under the table and I can clean above the table. All right, so that's the first thing I'm gonna do every time um, to help keep this machine safe. The next thing I need to do is I need to make sure my guard is adjusted correctly. So if this is my workpiece, I can slide it up alongside the blade and I'm checking the gap right here to make sure it's a quarter of an inch or less. Now in this instance, the guard is already set correctly, but I always need to double check before I turn the machine on and start making a cut. So I have double checked that this is correct. If my piece of material were much thicker or thinner than this piece, then I would need to make an adjustment to my guard. If you don't remember how to adjust the guard on this machine, you can check out the setup video. So that's the second step, is making sure your guard is set correctly. We've cleaned the machine, we've set the guard correctly. We also need to raise this lower guard up and lock it into position using the two thumb screws underneath. The reason for this lower guard is if the blade breaks, it prevents the blade from leaving the machine underneath the table, which could hurt you. Let's talk about where to stand when we're using this machine. When you are the operator of the machine, you are going to stand in front of the machine just like this. And my hands are going to be positioned on my workpiece off to the sides of the cut path. I'm never going to have my fingers directly in the cut path of the cut that I'm making. The reason I never want my hands in the direct cut path of the blade is that as I'm making my cut, if I slip and my hands are off to the side, they're simply going to slide past the blade and I'm not going to cut myself. However, if my fingers are in line and I slip, I run the risk of my fingers running into the teeth of the blade right here. Now, even though there's not much blade exposed, it is there, and those teeth are sharp enough that if my finger gets in there, it's going to cut my fingers up. So, hands will always stay off to the sides, out of the, the direct path of the blade. That could mean, if I'm cutting close to the edge of my piece, that I, simply, that I just have one hand on the workpiece guiding it through. Now the other option is to utilize a push stick, and that could be this style of push stick, and it can go up against my piece like this, and I can cut right up to the edge, and it's not a big deal if this gets cut by the blade. The other style of push stick that we have is this kind, and in similar fashion, I would put this on the back corner of my piece, and as I push it through, as it gets up here towards the blade, it's not a big deal. You can see this push stick has been cut up quite a bit, um, but this is a disposable piece of material. It's not a big deal if this gets cut. Um, much better for this to get cut than for your hands to get cut. Both of these push sticks hang on magnets on the front of the machine so that they are always there and available for you. Now let's talk about where to stand. I mentioned that as the operator, you are often going to be standing just directly in front of this machine, making your cuts. Now, there may be a situation where as you're making your cut, it would be nice to be able to grab your workpiece from the back. So you can either reach around and pull your workpiece through, or as the operator, you actually can come to the backside of the machine and pull your piece through 
to complete your cut. This is rare and it's not common, but it is a safe way to complete a cut because my hands are behind the blade. I can't possibly slip into the sharp side of the blade from here. Now, if you are watching or observing one of your classmates using this machine, there are a number of different places that you can stand, um, but there's one place that we don't want to stand with this machine, and that is off the right end of the table. So if someone was making a cut, I would not want to stand right here on this edge. And the reason is, because of the shape of these blades, if the blade were to break, and leave the machine, exit the machine, the most likely place for it to leave is gonna be out this end of the machine. If I'm standing here and this blade breaks and it comes shooting out the side, I don't want that to hit me. So we never stand off this right end of the machine. Great places to stand when you're watching would be behind the operator to the right or to the left, looking over their shoulder and down at the machine. You can also stand on the back side of the machine and watch from here. This is a great place to watch from. It gives you a good clean view without obstructing the operator. Those are the places where you can stand to watch. Those are the places where you can stand when you're making a cut. Again, the number one spot to not stand is right here off the right end of the machine. When you're operating this machine, if you take into account all of the safety items that I have just lined out for you, you are setting yourself up to minimize the risk of injury. We can't eliminate it, but we can minimize it by having processes and procedures that you guys follow every single time you're at the machine.